Lake, California. I love Big Bear. Big Bear is adorable. It's just like kind of an old timey place. And one of these little kind of mom and pop shops, which Big Bear is sort of famous for, is a little toy store called Teddy Bear Square. The name is adorable. My kids love it. I don't really understand why. I mean, it's really from a bygone era. What do I mean by bygone era? I mean, this lady Gladys who runs the store is probably in her 70s, just a lovely lady. My kids go in, spend about 35 minutes looking through knickknacks and end up coming out with some like watercolor paint book. But what is marvelous about this experience is when we check out, Gladys is using a pen and paper and manually in her beautiful cursive writing, writing down exactly what was purchased, the price, and calculating it on a calculator. So when we pay her, she puts a square chip reader into her iPhone and swipes it. So this is like a, a bizarre amalgam of technologies. You've got somebody manually entering, like, like a spreadsheet before it was a, a digital spreadsheet, and manually inventorying items. And I'm thinking to myself, what is it about Gladys that cannot adapt to modern technologies that are really allowing us to operate more efficiently? And this has become more relevant as the concept and discussion about AI becomes more prevalent in our lives. And I want to take some time today to talk about AI, which I don't totally understand, like, for example, a Generation Z -er would understand, and plastic surgery. How does AI, what, what is AI? What is this sort of godlike, ethereal creature? What is it? And why can't I, as a Gen X guy, understand it and how it's going to apply to my practice and my patients? Stay tuned if you're interested in learning more about this. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Jonathan Zelkin, a board certified plastic surgeon in Newport Beach, California. Today I wanna to explore my own deficiencies and limitations in understanding artificial intelligence, better known as AI, and why I can't seem to sort of grapple with it. It's kinda of like when I would play, you know, Duck Hunter on Nintendo in 1986 and my dad would come in and have no clue what we're doing, even though it was kind of like child's play to us. Or even when I was a kid and grown-ups would call the internet the World Wide Web or the internets, or they would always have some sort of odd way of, of describing what was second nature to me as a Gen Xer. And I think that disparity is becoming more relevant now with AI and the Gen Z, Gen X disparity. There is a difference between what somebody born in 2000 understands about the algorithm and AI compared to what I understand about it, which is like, this is hocus pocus witch magic. Why would I ever want to integrate something so misunderstood into my plastic surgery practice? How can computers simulate what we as physicians can do, what we as artists can do to, to sort of understand a patient? So I am naturally hesitant to try to figure out how AI is relevant to plastic surgery. Well, I guess that was until today. Today was different. I'm kind of like Gladys and Big Bear. I'm like the one who's gonna be seeing patients, handwriting my notes, uh, drawing pictures, really testing the fabric of the skin, and coming up with sort of like bespoke plans for my patients. And maybe that's something I'm gonna embrace for the rest of my career. But today, something kind of changed my mind. When Nick, my media manager, came to me and he said, I wanna talk about artificial intelligence. And he kind of gave me this sheet full of great ideas, like let's talk about how uh, AI has a role in personalized facial plastic surgery analysis, or how there are AI-driven predictive outcomes in facial plastic surgery. The concept of virtual consultations with people who are emulating, sorry, programs that are emulating me, and how it could be relevant in facial recognition. All of these things to me seem like I don't wanna really involve myself. I wanna be a little Michelangelo in the corner sculpting my patients, evaluating them, and if they don't come to me, then fine. But that's a very selfish way of thinking. And the reason that's selfish is because when Nick, with very little investment in time or cost, put my picture and the question, please analyze my face, into a chat GPT 4.0 or 40 or whatever it is. See, I don't even know the terminology. It came up with a lot of 
uh, important analyses of my face that even I as a facial plastic surgeon couldn't really grasp until I read it and I said, ding, ding, oh yeah, that's right. So when Nick put the picture, which we're gonna show on the screen, into ChatGPT, it responded, based on a straightforward assessment of your photo and the principles of facial proportions and the golden ratio, which again are central tenets of facial analysis that we all learn as plastic surgery residents, here are the three areas that might benefit from surgical enhancement. So it only found three areas of enhancement for me based on a single frontal view. Number one, chin and jawline definition. Your chin and jawline could benefit from greater definition. In terms of balance, a more prominent chin would enhance the lower third of your face and improve overall facial harmony. Now, all this time, I'm thinking I kind of have a prominent chin, but the truth is, if I even analyze my face on a side profile, which I never see my side profile, I have a little bit of pronathism, meaning my lower teeth come out farther than they should, but my chin actually does require more projection, I agree. Uh, in terms of balance, a more prominent chin would enhance the lower third of your face. I agree, I have actually a fairly weak chin, and I never realized it until I read it here today based on an AI analysis, a robot looking at my face and telling me what I need. So they requested chin augmentation or jawline contouring. I can never imagine myself getting a chin implant, but for all I know, it will be better looking. And, and people who are observing me from the outside would probably agree that a small chin implant would enhance my look. Or jawline contouring. I feel like I have pretty thin skin already and a well-defined jawline. People tell me I do, but I get it. Maybe that's because like I have this confirmation bias where I think I know my face better than anybody else, but the reality is I could benefit. The next thing it says is nose proportion, and that was kind of a low blow because I know what they're gonna say. They said the width of your nose in relationship to the rest of your face appears slightly wider than the ideal golden ratio proportions. They said I have a big nose. And you know, perhaps this is no surprise to me. I've been told this by friends and foes, and uh, I'm aware that refining my nose could indeed help bring it into better balance with the rest of my face. So I agree, another point for AI here, um, this one's a little bit more obvious in my opinion. They suggest rhinoplasty to help narrow or reshape my nose or align it more closely with ideal facial proportions. Okay, fair game. Last thing, mid facial volume. I've even made, this is like a great point, I've even made videos, I tell every patient that my mid face lacks volume. I also have a set back maxilla and I'm sure if we sent a side profile it would have told me that. But they say that there could be a slight lack of volume in my mid facial area, which would impact the overall balance of my facial proportions. And it's no surprise, even in other videos I've shown you that I've put volume in my mid face, especially after a trial of Ozempic when I lost too much weight. So I agree, I do have a relative deficiency of facial volume in the mid face, which is causing me to have these premature wrinkles and deep nasojugal folds. So they agree that enhancing this area could improve the vertical harmony of my face. So they're recommending a mid facelift or dermal fillers. Uh, they think that adding volume to the cheeks or mid face would create a more youthful and balanced appearance. Now, I like this, I agree, I, I think this is great. They say that these suggestions are based purely on mathematical ideals of facial proportions. Uh, but ultimately, the decision to undergo any procedure should align with your personal goals and comfort. Consult with a skilled plastic surgeon. So that is the crux of today's video. There is so much I learned from a quick freebie, plug and play, chat GPT freeware analysis of my face. Things that I did not think AI would know about me that are kind of spot on. But it really, should put a bold, a, a bold face if it can over this sentence, that the decision to undergo any procedure should align with your own personal goals and comfort. So yeah, AI is impressive, even at this early stage, and you and I both know that this technology is continuing to build and grow. There's no stopping this snowball, but I wanna talk about the potential pitfalls. So how can I bring AI into my practice? We can provide a chat GPT base for you to understand what we can do to optimize your facial harmony. But the risk of doing this is twofold. Number one, we're eliminating the art and science, or at least the art of medicine in plastic surgery. There is a, a, a careful balance. There is a uniqueness about everybody's face that makes us beautiful. And the concept of all of us trying to revert to a certain norm or an average is a little terrifying. 
And you know, you see this in certain countries where certain aesthetic standards are so prevalent that a lot of the young men and women are trying to achieve the same goals and everyone starts to look the same. That takes away from the beauty of life, the spice of life, diversity in appearance. And the other thing is, you know, I've got a complex now. Maybe I'm like gonna start thinking, do I need a chin implant? Do I, do I need like liposuction on my chin to enhance my jawline further? There, there's a lot here that is impacting my psyche that a computer, a robot generated based on a review of other websites. And I think it's dangerous to come in armed with this little sheet of paper to say what it takes to make me perfect. I have a lot of patients who are really transfixed by perceived facial imperfections. Things that you and I would not even think are ugly or unsightly, like perioral mounds, that really captivate, consume people. And I think it's dangerous for people to be armed with this kind of knowledge that is gonna open a whole new can of worms as far as complexes. It's also gonna boost the plastic surgery market as a whole, kind of like the Zoom boom did during the COVID pandemic when everyone started looking at their own faces in an unflattering downward selfie view. So be careful about AI. If you want to know what's wrong with you and you can't figure it out, AI is an important tool to have on your side, but as long as you're aware that the risks of this technology, having this power at your fingertips may outweigh the benefits, I think it's gonna be net positive for society and for our specialty. So these are my thoughts in a nutshell. I know it's a lot to take. Today was kind of an overwhelming day for me learning what is available in AI and how it can impact our specialty. And I hope this helps you better understand the, the potential risk and the power of this omnipresent technology. Thanks so much for watching. If you wanna learn more about my thoughts in AI and technology and plastic surgery, please comment below and I will do better at researching this evolving technology and presenting accordingly. Take care.